So far, we've learned a lot about the transactions, databases, object IDs. We're going to bring this all together as we create a new layer in our drawing. And we're going to take advantage of the transaction, the object ID for the layer table, the layer table object, and of course, a new object called a layer table record. Let's see how all of this works together and uh, how we add a new object to the drawings database. We're going to open up our exercise project, go up, of course, to our desktop under exercises, chapter five, and we'll go to 0504 and open up that solution. When we do and go into Solution Explorer under initialization, notice there is a layer, a command called li create layer already set up for us, and there's some text already there. Again, we already know how to get the editor. We talked a little bit about the database statement. We've had that already there for a couple exercises. We've gotten the layer table ID, object ID, and we have our transaction in both the using the database and using the transaction are wrapped in try catch and try error trapping statements. So let's go ahead and first get our layer table object. We got this in our last exercise as well, but we are changing the means of how we're opening it. So we're going to get the transaction and say, I want to get an object from the layer table ID. But this time we're opening it to write a new layer to it. So we now have our layer table that we can write a new layer to. And to create a new layer, we are going to type in dim layer table rec. That's the name of our variable here. You can call it whatever you'd like. But the object type is layer table record. So this record or row will be added to the layer table within our database. If you're used to any type of database programming, this is similar to just working with a graphical database. We're just working more on the non-graphical side here and uh, storing layers and so forth. Since this is a new layer table record, we're just going to add the word new in here. And that's as easy as it is to create that new row. Of course, the new row is not committed or saved or even connected to that layer table yet. We'll do that as we go through. But first, let's make sure our, our layer has a name. So I'm going to go into my layer table record. Notice again all the properties that we have in here, including color. You also have a description. You have some properties such as whether the layer is off or frozen, whether it's locked or plottable. And you can set all these different ones, including the line weight and so forth. We're going to set the name and we're going to say my new layer. Now that we have the new layer created, we're going to add it to our layer table. Remember that the layer table is, is just really a very fancy collection. So we're going to add that layer table rec variable to it. And then we also have to tell the transaction that, uh, we've added a newly created database object. And so he can track that and make sure that it's committed to the drawing. So that's the, the bulk of our code. We got our layer table object and we made sure it was open so we could add our new layer table record to that layer table object. We added a name to our layer. We've added that into our table and then made sure that the transaction recognizes that newly created database object. Let's go ahead and test our code and see if that new layer is created. So once AutoCAD, of course, launches and initializes, we'll type in net load at the command line and load our library. Go to the desktop, exercise, chapter 5, 0504, and then the bin debug, we'll have our DLL file. And I'll type in li create layer. It doesn't look like anything happened, uh, but if you look at my layer drop down, I now have that my new layer layer created for me. It's already stored, ready to go. If I fire the command again, though, it's going to come up with a message. This is part of that error trapping, the try, catch, in try that we built. Uh, notice the 
dialog shows up. It says error with transaction and then tells me what the error is. There's already a layer there with that name. So that's one way to keep it nice and clean. Another way is, of course, to check before we create the layer to see if the layer exists. So how do we do that? Well, instead of typing a lot of code here, we're going to just take a look at what's already been created and take advantage of that. I'm going to take advantage of a function that's in here. Is layer exists. We feed it the transaction object. We feed it the layer table object. And then we feed it the name my new layer. So if it returns and says the layer exists, then we don't want to do anything. So we're going to say if it returns and says, no, the layer doesn't exist, it's false, it doesn't exist, then we'll go ahead and create that new layer. So we're going to just move that in there. So that uh, function there, what is actually going on? Well, it's in our support functions down below. There's a new function that was created. It's called is layer exists. And notice there's some parameters. We need these parameters and it returns a Boolean, a true or false. And all it's going to do is it's going to loop through the layer table and find and check every single layer in that layer table and see if it currently has the same name. If it does, it's going to say the layer already exists and come back and tell us that. So let's go ahead and with this newly added condition, let's run our code now. Before it still ran clean, it gave us the notification. It didn't crash AutoCAD. It told us what the issue was, but this process will be even cleaner in that we won't have the message that comes up and tells the user that uh, we've caused a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up li create layer. It adds that new layer in. I'm going to fire it up again and absolutely nothing happens. Uh, that's what we call a nice clean method. You, you really are ending the command without causing issues or errors. You do probably want to tell the user something's going on though. So we're going to close this down. We're going to add one more portion to our condition. So if it is false, that means we know we can create the layer. The layer does not exist. However, if it does exist, let's go ahead and tell the user the message layer already exists. And that way they're aware of why we ended and nothing changed or nothing happened. So we'll fire this one last time. You're starting to see the process here as we work through our code. You're not just writing code, but you're also making sure you trap the errors effectively that you approach it in a nice, clean manner. So we're going to go ahead and load our DLL. We'll fire li create layer. That new layer is added in. I'm going to fire li create layer again, and it says, I'm sorry, the layer already exists. We see a nice process here. We're able to not only create that layer very easily, but we're also, we add it to the collection, that layer table, we make sure the transaction recognizes this newly created object. And it's always good to build in some type of safety to check if the text style, the dimension style, the layer, any of these already exist before we start creating them. What we've done so far, everything that we've done so far with layers as non-graphical objects, we can do with textiles and other non-graphical objects within our drawing as well. Let's look at how we work or create a graphical object such as a line in our next exercise.